summer driving. It's supposed to be a peaceful experience, but good weather brings out the worst in Canadian motorists. When driving conditions are perfect, we speed, we tailgate, and we have more serious accidents than we do when roads are icy. Out of respect for public safety, we're taking the country's eight most dangerous drivers off the road. Look out! This is Canada's worst driver. Last winter, we discovered that Chris Ferguson is Canada's worst driver when it comes to dealing with frozen conditions. I think I pissed myself. While he was crashing into things at our driver rehabilitation center, we knew we had to find out who the worst summer driver is. So... These both lanes go left? Yes. Oh, this is what I hate. When the roads thought out, we asked you to nominate your loved ones for the fair weather title of Canada's worst driver. Oh my... God, we're dead. Jesus. For the sake of the nation. Canada's worst driver. Please help my wife become a better driver. These eight people answered the call and let us know about these horribly dangerous drivers. Colin, a reckless street racer who still lives with his mom in Ontario, was nominated as Canada's worst driver by his friend Jeremy. Michael, an over-analytical slowpoke from Vancouver, was made a candidate by his pal, Eric. Oh, that's the best job I can do. Karen used to drive well. Now she's afraid of the highway. Her husband, Alan, thinks she's the worst. In the video game world, Sean is a champion NASCAR racer. But in the real world, his niece, Malena, worries he's a speeding time bomb. Oh, my God! Holy f Sean! Jody's next. This incredibly indecisive Manitoban mom what? Now what? was nominated as the country's lousiest driver by her husband, Sam. Then there's Shannon from Calgary. She's responsible for so many scratch and run incidents, her best friend, Sarah, had to turn her in. Buddy, don't ride his ass. Well, for sakes, he's going so slow. Matt, a real estate dealer from Toronto, gets so distracted, he once cruised into a department store window. His friend, Suzanne, is calling him on it. And finally, there's Henrietta, who gets so nervous in traffic, she becomes physically ill. She was nominated as Canada's worst driver by her husband, Andy. <laughs> this hot seven-part series will unfold just like our previous Frozen edition. Canada's worst drivers will be taken off public roads and put into our rehabilitation center. You're on dangerous ground. I'm Quarantined as students, they will receive badly needed private lessons. Then, every show, each of them will get behind the wheel for three major challenges designed to test and teach the fundamentals of safe driving in hazardous conditions. We didn't say stop! To show each course can be executed by an average driver, I'll be going through each one first. At the end of every episode, the most improved motorist will be allowed to go home. But the rest of these automotively challenged souls will have to stick around to receive more training at our driver rehabilitation center. When only three students remain, they will go head to head to head in our ultimate road test. And when they reach the checkered flag, someone will be crowned Canada's worst driver. No one will graduate in this opening episode because we need to start off by seeing just how bad these drivers really are. To begin their evaluation, we're asking them to navigate their way to the Driver Rehabilitation Centre, which this year is bunkered down within the walls of Canadian Forces Base Borden, Ontario. These sheets are going to tell you the exact route we want you to take to get to the Driver Rehabilitation Centre. To make sure they don't get lost, we're providing maps and written directions detailing the entire 40-kilometre route. From Wasega Beach, it should be almost an hour-long drive to CFB Borden. It's a staggered start, and Henrietta leaves first. You can fire up your machine if you want. While Henrietta nervously heads off, the rest of the bad drivers pour over their maps, plotting routes. <sighs> I just wish they had, like, a you are here sign. Clock is on. Once Jody leaves, have a safe trip. so does Matt. Take care, we'll see you at the driver rehabilitation center. Then Karen waves goodbye. Nice with the wipers, I like that. When overconfident Colin realizes he'll be leaving later than most, he makes it his goal to pass as many cars as he can. I step in to make sure he understands this is not a race. Your goal is just to get there. You don't have to be concerned about beating anyone. All right, we'll take our time. Safe and sound. We will not break any laws. 
Michael, on the other hand, sets himself up to break a law before he even pulls out. Let's time now to see how long it takes before he actually drives away. He's in there right now, groping at levers, hoping to release the emergency brake. Instead, Michael unwittingly pops the hood. It's illegal to drive with your hood not secured. Did you hit anything you shouldn't have hit? I don't think so. Why? Your hood is up. Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> Under the hood of Colin's Honda Civic is a puny little engine that he's modified to go faster. So fire up this souped up machine. And... Wow, you're so cool. <laughs> Take a safe ride, hey? By the time everyone is on the road, Shannon is hopelessly lost. Yo, this is hard. I don't know, like, Ontario situation. Henrietta's getting queasy. Oh, I'm so nervous. My stomach is just rolling. And Jody is having trouble deciding which lane she's supposed to be in. I want to be in this lane. Stay in the right lane. Okay, I couldn't do that from the other lane. What's that lane then? This lane, I'm going with the lane. We learned that lane selection is difficult for Jody when we met her last month in Manitoba. What am I doing? Street. But this is almost like it cuts it off. Where does it cut it off? Well, this whole it merges and I. When Jody gets frustrated, she becomes completely incapable of making her own decisions. Can I turn now? Yes or no? Now what? Well, you could have. What? Now what? You're already hammering on your. Okay, fault. go in here then. Oh, shh. Well, you didn't tell me what to do, and I was asking you, now what? I wanted a simple answer, yes or no, or left or right. You asked what to do, I said turn right. No, you didn't. I did. No, you didn't. I tense up, and I just get very, very panicky. And... <laughs> That's yeah, generally what she looks like. <gasps> no! I'm not! Oh, Jody, Sam, I can't! There. When Jody panics, she can't even remember the meaning of a green light. Light is green. So it means what? Well, it means green. Go. English, go! Yes or no? Doesn't green mean go? Well, no, not never, not necessarily. See, like three lights. Like, what does that mean? I can go, right? It's a green light. Okay. Okay. Can I go? Yes or no? It's a green light. There's no green. There's no yeah. yellow. There's no arrow. Yeah. If I go straight, I'm okay. Sure. Just let the guy in front of me. I can't. Okay. Now what? It's a green, green light. Green or a turn, right? Okay. Now what? It's red. So we'll go straight. But it's red. The arrow says straight. What do I want at this set of lights? Green or green and arrow or an arrow? <laughs> it's just what I do, just a reaction. And just being on the show would be um, helpful or beneficial for me. Um, it would make me just a better, more at ease, uh, just more comfortable driver, more relaxed. On the road to rehab, Shannon's not relaxed. She's lost. It's not Main Street, buddy. And so is Karen. Are we going in circles? Michael, on the other hand, is using the map we gave him to find a better map store. Hello. Looking for a map of the local area. Besides having good forethought, one thing Michael can boast about as a driver is his tenacity. The man just doesn't quit. It took me nine times to get my license. Good driving requires making constant decisions. But Michael's mind does not like working on the fly. When Michael's setting up for doing a task, he sets himself a mental checklist. Enter car, put on seatbelt, turn key, three quarters turn, release. This is how methodical the checklist is. When he parallel parks, Michael makes a proper checklist, but he can't follow it. Uh, I just bumped into their van. I do not like backing up. I'm not very good at it. Oh, that's the best job I can do. Far, far too much space. Michael's most dizzying habit behind the wheel is one he can't explain. Michael in tunnels is very unique and very strange. The long tunnel near Michael's home in Horseshoe Bay always leaves him breathless. Okay, big. When I go through a tunnel, I have to hold my breath because I can't convince myself to breathe. Still there? Still there, okay. Don't black out or pass out. Michael? 
Michael. Okay. You okay there? I'm fine. All righty then. On the road to rehab, Michael is trying to turn his driving life around. Sean, the last to leave, has already passed Shannon. Now, he's itching to pass more people. Just take your time, it's not a race. Sean is one of those drivers who gets so close to your rear bumper, you feel as though he's trying to force you off the road. In fact, that's exactly what Sean is doing. Although Sean doesn't call it forcing, he calls it nerving people off the road. Slow down. Well, if I could just nerve this guy off the road, maybe we can get there at a decent He's time. Going speed limits. Oh God. Oh God. <laughs> Sean, you got weight on her bumper. Way ahead of Sean, Colin is also breaking laws he promised to obey. See if we can top this bad boy out. Elsewhere on the course, Matt does an illegal U-turn, while Karen has a fight brewing with her husband. And Shannon is still lost. Go back that way. When we met Shannon a few weeks ago in Calgary, she wanted to conceal her identity on the road. So before leaving, she illegally switched the license plates on her vehicle. This is my license, which I can't get replaced because, I'll, first of all, I'll take it away. Second of all, I have to pay all my tickets first. I'm always late, running late and stuff. I've had five cars and I've told each one within about three to six months of having them. Put the pedal to the metal. Go like Get out of my way. way. If you drive like that, I'm gonna throw up. I would like to apologize to the people whose cars I've hit. Sorry. Shannon destroys cars because she finds it fun. Curb. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. There isn't a day that she drives her vehicle without hitting something. Oh. Maybe a car, maybe a curb, maybe a post. Ah! Yes! I think she's extremely dangerous to herself and others. She's especially dangerous when it comes to parking. Stop, stop. Crank it the other way. Slowly. Stop, you got it, stop. So many times when we're parking, especially going to the bar, she will hit a car. Sarah, get out! Crank it out! When we return, Canada's worst drivers live up to their billing. Hi. Oh my god! Canada's worst drivers are on a 40 kilometer cruise headed for our driver rehabilitation center. Here's how it's going so far Matt, Colin, and Sean are all speeding. You guys start rally driving together. Karen and her husband are fighting. If you hit me on the head with that map one more time, it's going to be stuffed up your left nostril. Jody can't make a decision on her own. Shannon is perpetually lost, and Henrietta is still feeling nauseous. We'll never find our way. I'm discouraged already. Henrietta should follow her gut and turn around. Hope we turn the right way. There's not too many roads up here, is there? I'm going this way anyway. I'm the pilot. Henrietta wants driving rehabilitation to combat her anxiety. My main issue with driving is that I'm very nervous and I find it very hard to relax. She doesn't relax. She takes too much time. I'll be here all day. Could be here for a week. For Henrietta to change lanes in heavy traffic, it probably takes about 10 times as long as it would other drivers. Did that car go by yet? Let me in. Check your mirrors. He's not going to let me in. Does he let me in? Jeez, I'm going to get in an accident here. <laughs> At home near Ottawa, Henrietta laughs her way through life. But on the road, there is nothing but stress. Oh, God, my stomach has just got a knot. I'm feeling like I'm going to vomit, Andy. She may lack confidence, but Henrietta has rage to spare. When uh, Henrietta's driving, somebody happens to cut her off or pull out in front of her real, you know, finger comes up, you son of a What's wrong with that truck? Why is it not going? Keep right. going, it's all of I have to hey, hey. I don't care, I have to change lanes. There's no way I can change lanes here. 
Today, Henrietta's nervous she'll never find the rehab center. This is ridiculous. Speaking of ridiculous, before making most turns, Jody comes to a complete stop in the middle of the road without signaling. No. Oh, what am Left I doing? Signal. Left? Yes. Go. It's not a stop sign. Jody, you have the right of way. That's an accident waiting to happen. Just be patient. I don't know where. I have no clue on earth where I am going. <laughs> As Matt approaches the next turnoff, he sees Jody in one of her stationary moments. Ooh, that looks like another bad driver in front of us. It's pretty good. Jody missed the turnoff, but instead of doubling back and driving through it from the other direction, she's chosen to maneuver her car into the oncoming traffic lane, where she's now creeping along in reverse through the four-way intersection, hoping people can read her mind. I'm backing up. Hello. This one move simultaneously breaks four traffic laws. How about the one on this side of you? What? Well, he's on off the gravel road here. On the other side of the confidence coin, there's Colin, who's now recklessly speeding past people, even though he said he wouldn't. Oh, buddy. Uh, go, give her. How fast we do? We're doing about 20. Nothing, man. That's nothing. It's child's play. 120 kilometers an hour is 40 over the speed limit and downright reckless through this community. Yeah, that's definitely Poe. Yeah. Bring it down. Yeah. Nice. Solid. Guy, <laughs> yeah. okay, we were going 140. Dude. When Colin turns onto the gravel road, yeah, this is not cool for my paint job. He sees a car up ahead. Yeah, when he realizes it's Henrietta. Is that them? Oh, dude, that is them. Colin can't wait to prove his machismo by passing the nervous grandmother. Yeah, snake them. Knowing Colin is behind her... It is him, too, by God. <laughs> ...makes Henrietta more nervous, and that makes her even slower. Come on, turn. Oh, my God. Oh my God. I'm growing a beard here. the speed limit. Shockingly, Colin recently graduated from a two-year police foundations training course. But when we met him last month and he took us for a spin around his hometown of Whitby, Ontario, one thing Colin clearly hadn't learned at police school was respect for the law. See, this is what I like. I like driving at a normal speed of like 150, 160. What are laws, really? Laws are the things that keep us safe. Oh my God. We're dead. Jesus. The law says, do not engage in organized drag races on deserted roads. But Colin does that, and loses. The law also says to not engage in spontaneous races on active roads. But Colin does that too, and loses. Whoa. Oh, oh no. Oh my god. When Colin gets behind the wheel, he's very uh, reckless and uh, amateur. Total number of tickets I've ever had is about 30. Colin should have dozens more tickets, but as a police officer in training, he has an ace up his sleeve, and he's not ashamed to play it. This is my student ID from the college I go to, and when I get pulled over, I pull this out a lot and use it to get out of it. I usually just say, oh, I'm uh, late for a test for my police foundations course at Durham College. Uh, by the way, did I mention I was in police foundations? And that's disturbing. But what's most shocking about this budding cop is that instead of appreciating the generosity of his brothers and sisters on the force, he looks down on them. I don't think cops are the smartest people out there. Oh, smartest smartest people, people, out there. people out there. Saying that could come back to haunt, Colin. Huh? Meanwhile, Shannon's found ice cream, but not her bearings. No exit! Oh my god, I'm gonna have a Harry. <laughs> Where's Main Street? After 47 minutes, she's still in Wasega Beach. What the f The trip's starting point. We're back on River Road West. No way. 
<laughs> Karen is also lost, but she can't even try to resolve the situation herself because her husband, Alan, won't let her make any decisions. Hang on. Back up. No, 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 stop. Just, Karen. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Straighten it out. Straighten it out. Keep going, keep going. Keep going where? Up. What? Just back up. I'm going to go reverse in this pathway. No, you're not. Yes, I am. At one time, Karen had plenty of confidence. I used to drive the highway regularly, and now it's beyond me. When we met Karen in Port Perry, Ontario, she explained how her fear of driving is affecting her life. I can't go to the store by myself. I can't go and visit my daughter and son-in-law and granddaughter by myself. I've made myself housebound. Karen can manage to drive slowly if she has a passenger. But when her husband, Alan, is that passenger, he can't remain supportive. By the way, Alan is a traffic cop. Just speed up, please. Get your speed up, get your speed up, get your speed up. Come on, keep your speed up, up to 60, okay? F off. When I'm driving with Karen, I do go into a Jekyll and Hyde. How much going north here? Don't know, I'm f***ed off. Oh, stop it! And become a completely different person. Don't anticipate. You told me to always anticipate and look at the big picture. But it wasn't a stale green. Well, I shouldn't know that. He will roar at me. Change lanes, just slow down. Check your blind spot. And he will yell, Go! Watch Sorry. the people. They're holding that wheel off, okay? Whoa, whoa! And probably a danger to the public at large. I don't think Karen will ever make it back out there. It'll, uh, it'll take a lot. We've got a lot in store for Karen. Watch, 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 watch. If she makes it to the rehab center. Karen! Karen, what? Drive. Matt never wears a seatbelt. And today he doesn't want to wear his jacket. So he squirms out of it while speeding. When we met Matt, he said that as a multitasking real estate agent, he needs to drive around Toronto without any hands on the wheel. Two of my favorite things to do in the car are talk on my phone and smoke. Hello, bad all good. He loves to drive with his knees. Hand on the steering wheel. Hand on the steering wheel. My Achilles heel is lack of attention. Oh. <gasps> Sorry. Matt has a long list of bad habits that have caused a long list of bad accidents. Looking through my map book, oh. I send emails from my phone on a regular basis. When Matt eats while driving, he's more concerned with cleanliness than pedestrians. Oh wow, it all has absorbed all the lettuce. <laughs> Multitasking is a habit of many highly effective people. <gasps> Matt's multitasking is illegal, so he often gets caught. I've gotten about 20 tickets and I've been to court about 20 times. And he's only lost twice. If you get a ticket, you have a civic obligation to go and fight it. Just set up a court date, request for all the evidence from the police, and I guarantee you that you will almost certainly win. Another person who likes to contest every ticket he gets is Sean. This guy's not even doing the speed limit, so if I pass him, I don't want to freak out. The car Sean wants to pass belongs to Michael who now turns onto a gravel road and drops his speed down to 40 kilometers an hour. Anyone who thinks they can tear along a road like this is either a fool or in a remake of Dukes of Hazard. We just got passed by someone with the custom license plate, Speed! Hey, they put in three E's. You have to exaggerate it. Passing Michael, Sean went 110 in an 80 zone. Sean? What? Slow down. When we met Sean at home in Stratford, Ontario, he was downright proud to be named one of Canada's worst drivers. Speed is yours to discover. I want to show that speed is actually safe. Speeding is safer. But look at how many cars I got by. Each one of those cars is five points. We're not playing a game. Sean's confusion comes from the fact that in his living room, he is the fastest stock car racer on the planet. Really, he won the official NASCAR online championship. Now, he's having difficulty separating real consequences from virtual ones. When I'm driving for real on the roads, my online 
mentality emerges aggressively. And I look at the cars as if they're race cars because it feels exactly the same. I get all keyed up when I'm at a, at a red light because I'm curious about what's going to happen with the car beside me. Smoked him. To Sean, everything is a race. He cuts corners whenever he can. Okay, wrong side of the road. He speeds as if it's his right. Okay, 130, it's 80. And he passes whenever possible. Oh my God! Holy shit, Sean! I would make more mistakes if I was driving slow. When we return, Canada's worst drivers arrive at the rehabilitation center. The challenge is, can you actually wrap your head around becoming a good driver? The worst drivers in the country, as nominated by you, are on a 40-kilometer cruise headed toward our driver rehabilitation center, which this year is nestled safely inside Canadian Forces Base Borden. Follow signs to the CFB Borden. Follow signs to CFB Borden. Follow the signs to CFB Borden. A what? It says follow the signs to CFB Borden. A what board? Okay, which lane am I in? I'm Go going... straight. Okay, follow one... the signs. Slow down right now. Follow the Stand. signs. Shut up. Well, you said slow down. Well, you know what I mean. You don't have to be. Follow the signs to CFB Borden. The... Oh, okay. So Matt, just swing your car around. You're the first one in and back into your spot. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, first thing I gotta ask you to do is pop your keys in there. You're not getting them back. Driving here took Matt 55 minutes, and he broke the law 10 times. Taking your jacket off at 100 kilometers an hour went how? You can't stop for these things. Colin's next to arrive. Remember what he said to me before leaving Wasega Beach? We will not break any laws. Coming to rehab, Colin broke the law 29 times. That's right, 29. Why are you here? To become a safer driver. But yeah, that's the challenge. Technically, to become a safer gone. driver, not to see if you can show off on yeah. TV or go 120 in a 60 zone. Yeah. The challenge is, can you actually wrap your head around becoming a good driver? Please do what we say oh, yeah. and actually make an attempt at becoming a safe driver. I will. Jody is next to arrive. If you graduate, you can get your keys back. She won't graduate until she stops asking for advice. What do you want? I, I want what to be more of a comfortable driver. I want it to become lesser and lesser as I get frustrated. We'll calm you down. Okay. Sean's next in. Safe and sound? Absolutely. While getting here, Sean broke the speed limit every time there was no one in front of him. I don't feel that it's going fast. It just feels very efficient. I'd like to be told why I should maintain every speed limit when I don't feel that's the safe thing to do. And well, so I'm you're here to somebody. prove a point? Is that what you're telling me? That's what I'm going to try to do, sure. Next on the runway is Henrietta and Karen. Henrietta's parking leaves a little to be desired, but she's in. Thank you. And so is Karen. Karen and Henrietta both blame their poor performances on their husbands. Oh, that's it. The navigator was terrible. Well, that and the <laughs> red car that swished blew by. past us at a high rate of speed on a dirt road. They're talking about Sean. Well, this is an issue I'm going to bring up with him because he seems to think that him driving like that doesn't have any effect on anybody else on the road. Well, it does. Michael's next. Michael was also adversely affected by Sean. Tell me about the scariest part of your drive. I'd say it was when we got passed by the fellow with the license plate, Speed. Does it for an instant make you a worse driver? I think it would make almost anyone a worse driver simply because you have to divert attention to worry about whether or not this lunatic is going to plow into you. Poor old Shannon, last one in. How was the drive? Confusing. What happened? We all know what happened. Shannon got horribly lost, then she got here. They all got here, in their own special way. What the bad drivers don't know is that watching them get here was our crack team of driving experts. No, they're not the village people. They are. Sergeant Cam Woolley from the Ontario Provincial Police Force's Highway Safety Division. I really think if these guys don't learn something here, they're both going to be statistics. Scott Marshall is our head driving instructor. I can't teach you if you don't want to learn. 
Race car driver Giuliana Chioviti is our high speed expert. You're really not getting anything that we're trying to help you with here. And insurance broker Marcus Adjaman is here to explain the financial ramifications of bad driving. 50% surcharge, that's, that's a lot of money. With the bad drivers, please take a step forward. Combined, you eight people are responsible for 76 serious accidents. You are Canada's worst drivers. But by coming here to the Driver Rehabilitation Centre, you have shown a serious desire to improve. We recognise that, and we want you to know you will improve. If you don't, you won't leave. After the break, oh Canada's worst drivers fall to pieces. The eight lousiest drivers in the country have shown us how well they can drive on a highway. Now it's time to complete their episode one evaluation by seeing how well they can handle precise steering under stressful circumstances. To answer a question I'm sure that one of our students will have, no, they're not allowed to hit anything. Let's go camping. The first part of this course leads the driver through stacks of old rims and hubs. Some tight turning, but quite doable. One thing is for certain, I refuse to scratch this gorgeous car. We leave the hallway of hubs and enter a hallway of cars. More precision steering, just a different look. There's only inches to spare on both sides of this vehicle, but inches is all you need. Hooey, that's tight. Then over some runners and into this tunnel. When they come through the tunnel, their instruction is to get the machine up to 50 kilometers an hour on this straightaway. Then they have to slow down and look at these two tunnels. The tunnel on the left is too low for the roof cargo. The one on the right is high enough just for me and the bicycle to get through. Coming up to the end, it's just a simple turn. And then when you get her lined up, can back it straight into the parking garage, which is a little bit too short. So they're going to have to pull up before the canoe goes through the back wall. Bingo, I'm in. Now, let's see how Canada's worst drivers do. First to drive the lime green pacer, Michael. Rough. Did I mention the door on that blue car might pop open? I don't think it's avoidable. Of course it's avoidable. Everything here is avoidable. Michael doesn't seem to know where his car is. What a pain. So far not too shabby. Ah, not good. Ow. Also not good. Also not good. Okay, let's kick the speed. In this section, drivers must reach 40 kilometers an hour, but they can't exceed 50. Michael does it, but he doesn't slow down before driving through the wrong archway. Ah, what in the world? I think that was the bicycle. Right. Guess at how many things you hit. Minimum nine. Try 17. Next to run the course is Sean. He knows it's not a race. Even so, he races. Oops. Ow, 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 ow. There is no way this thing's gonna make it. I mean, this is not a fast course. Sean, think like a driver, not a race driver. We got a lot of time to make up gear. Time? Oh my god! We're not in a rush. You can slow down. Yeah. He's on his. He's got his own agenda. Everything's always a race. Why do you keep doing that? Oh my god! I'm so closing my eyes. Whoa. I cannot watch this. Oh my god! You're gonna hit a car. I'm hitting nothing. When Sean bashes through the cage, he floors it up to 50. Oh my god! Chooses the right tunnel and parks the car with the grace of a bar fight. <laughs> <laughs> He hit everything. And this guy claims speed improves his driving? Karen never speeds. Her husband won't allow it. Take your time. There we go. Will Karen actually get to drive this course? No. Or will her husband, Alan, order every turn of the wheel? Turn the f***ing car, dude. Now turn. Cut it. Okay, now. Okay, wait, wait. Slow down. Okay, go. Cut it slow now. Is there anything else you'd like to freaking suggest? She relies too much on people, I think. Yes, she needs to be more decisive. Oh! 
this laughter is not joy, it's hysteria. Getting the car up to 50, Karen steers towards one of our barricades. Murphy, you're going over the tire. Okay, cut it. What are you doing? Cut it, baby. I'm cutting it. Well, don't shout at me. Straighten it out now. Watch, watch, watch. You're going too far. Pull ahead. Now. Okay. I don't want anybody to see this. See what? The bad driving? Or the 93 orders she got from her husband? Okay. That was just completely embarrassing. When we come back, Colin fails to impress the police. This guy's an idiot. Our lime green 1978 Pacer used to be beautiful. Now it's peeling because Canada's worst drivers have been using it to attack our precision steering course. Murphy. Next to drive it is our Hellraiser, Shannon. Shannon likes to hit things. When she first arrived at the rehab center, she told me all about it. Do you like it? Hitting stuff? Going fast? Running reds? Come on, now be honest. Yeah. You like it? <laughs> you like it? Yes. You look at a parking spot and go, I can't fit in there, but I'm going to try. And then scrape and then giggle and run away. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, yeah. It sounds so horrible when you say it, though. True to form, Shannon drives onto the course, hits things, and loves it. She's a hitter. She, yeah, she likes to hit. Like all the other bad drivers, Shannon never once stops to back up and realign her vehicle. And on this tight course, reversing to reposition is crucial. Good God! Headed for the low tunnel, Shannon picks up speed. For Shannon, the road to recovery is going to be long. Very, very long. Our distracted driver, Matt, is next. Remember, accuracy is just as important as speed sometimes. Oh, well. On this course, Matt's got no cell phone, no hamburger, and no jacket, so he should do just fine. But Matt drives into the first series of rims like they're magnets. Honey. God, that look at the box. That's really hard. <laughs> but through the parked cars, Matt drives like he's drunk. Okay, don't worry, we're going through this now, we'll be fine. And that's the worst so far. Driving takes so much concentration for Matt, he forgets there's a bike on his roof. Oh, great. Okay. Great job. Great job. <laughs> Suzanne, I apologize, that must have been a scary trip for you. <laughs> it was a scary trip for all of us. Next to demonstrate his skill level is Colin. Colin doesn't enjoy hitting things. He gets his adrenaline by speeding and just barely missing things. Whoa! Whoa. Wow. And he doesn't stop. Doesn't even blink. Okay. Apparently, Colin only likes steering around obstacles when it's his own car that's on the line. At the helm of our pacer, he runs over objects intentionally. They should just stop right now. I don't even want to watch. The point of this exercise is so our experts can form an opinion on the driving skills of our participants. This guy's an idiot. Yeah. He's a total clown. There's no need to watch any more of Colin's romp. The verdict is in. Henrietta's next to drive the course. Unlike Colin, Henrietta's trying to miss things. However, her result is pretty much the same as his, except with more yelling. Did I do that to the car? Oh my God. Henrietta hit 22 things and she blames her bad drive on us. You had it too narrow. When we come back, Jody gives it everything she's got. Canada's worst drivers are almost done getting evaluated. <gasps> Murphy. Last to run the precision steering course is Jody. Jody came here to get more confidence. Right now, she has exactly none. Hey, I totally do not know what I'm supposed to do. She's a very timid driver. Just, I can't do this. Let's go. Okay, now where? Well, follow the pylons. You have to stay in amongst the pylons. Now what? You're okay. <gasps> what? No, you're okay. What? Nothing. Don't scream at me. Wow. She needs to calm down. <gasps> okay. Yeah. Now back up and turn that way. I, I can't. 
please turn the wheel. I don't know. I can't do that. Just turn this way a little Relax, bit. Please. Jody's only gone 30 meters, and already she's blowing a gasket. <gasps> something hey. hit. Did you tell turn me this something way. hit? And something hit her. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do this. Hey, turn to the left. Locks, 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 locks. Just keep going. Sam! <sighs> I can't. Don't do that to me, please. I can't do this anymore. She just put she's, it in the car. broke down. She's totally broke down. To continue, Jody wants Sam to make every decision for her. Please tell me if I'm going to hit. You're not going to hit. Then after this car, you want to get hey, close just, to the... Whoa. Okay. This car first, one at a time. Okay, then stay close to this car. Now what? Well, turn that way. Wait, now what? You're going straight. I'm done. No, you're not getting out. You're not done. Yes, just I'm done. Gather yourself and we'll keep going. I can't do this and I won't. I can't do this. <sighs> Sam, I can't. I think she's a little bit dramatic. She's dangerous. Yes, yeah, she is. I hate to see her in traffic. She's going to cause a, a big one. I so want out of this. When Jody reaches the part of the course where she must go at least 40k an hour, she can't get up to speed. When she's told to reverse back and try again, she refuses. Driving, I'm not doing this. It's just straight. All you do is just look in your mirror and back up along the tires. Don't even go there. So, Sam takes the car back for her second attempt. You gotta floor it. Easier said than none. The move. Yeah, no. give her hard. Lots, 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 lots. Thirty-nine. One kilometer too slow. You have to do forty, but not fifty. Do you want to try backing it up one more time? No. Fine. These people cannot comprehend my situation. Just this time, accelerate from a little bit further back. And don't hit the brake till a little bit further past, okay? What do you mean? Explain that again. Well, you didn't start accelerating. English. On her third attempt, Jody succeeds. 45, perfect. Stop, 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 stop! Oops. Okay, there's like three feet sticking out past the car. Yeah, you're, that, that's fine. So, well, you have to stop me before three feet before the canoe hits. Okay. Do you understand? Yes. Sam understands, but Jody clearly doesn't. Straight like this. Yeah, straight like that. Just straight. Yeah, parallel. straight. Back like parallel. Yes, just don't turn the wheel, nothing. Back, straight. I'm holding the wheel like this. Yes, back up. A little bit more. Stop. Park. Leave it there. What? I just couldn't do it. I just tried too hard. I don't want to screw up at it. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Jody finished the course, but it also finished her. We've reached the end of our first episode here at Canada's Worst Driver. Now, at this stage in the show, we would normally give someone back their keys and allow them to drive home. But this being our debut show for this season, it's all about your evaluation. So, here's your evaluation. Most of you have no idea how to maneuver a vehicle. And those of you who do have driving skills made so many moving violations just getting here to the rehab center that Sergeant Cam Woolley says we could have handed out over $10,000 in traffic tickets. Over the course of the next six episodes, those of you who learn how to handle a vehicle responsibly will get to leave our rehab center as graduates. However, if you fail to merge into the world of common sense motoring, you will be named Canada's worst driver. Where are you going? On the next episode of Canada's Worst Driver, there's a little bit of fighting. Put the thing in drive and go out there. No! Don't ask stupid questions. Get out of the car. <laughs> you yell out one number and I want a divorce. A little bit of colliding. And a lot of damage from parallel parking. Oh! Oh my god!